I never knew my father. I heard he was up to some sketchy stuff, and my mother told me that he might return one day. Well, that's when my grandpa, which is my father's father, broke the news to me. My father is not a good man, and Grandpa's going to find him. He's going to hunt him down and make sure that he pays for all the child support he's missed over the years. My grandfather was pretty much forced to save our life pretty much by getting my father, his son, to pay child support and fix his mistakes. I never actually saw my dad, as at first, when I was really young, my mom told me that he had to travel somewhere and he was gone for years. So I figured that there was something else going on. When I got a little older, she told me that he actually left right when I was born and that he may not come back. This destroyed me mentally and growing up without a dad made some serious issues for me. The more I grew older, the more I cared less and less about having a father and cared more about our own deteriorating financial situation, since my mom was working minimum wage in a very tiring job in our town, like busting tables, and I was too young to get any money, so our life was very, very poor, and we barely had anyone except for my grandpa, who was my dad's father. Grandpa was completely different from my dad. He was a well-respected man in our town who gave us as much money as he could, even if it wasn't that much, he did what he had. The problem was my mom was always shy and embarrassed about talking to grandpa. She always feared that he was like his son, so we barely went to see him. And I didn't really get to spend any time with him. Still, he helped me when he could and my mom was always distrustful. The problem was that my dad wasn't paying any kind of child support as he divorced my mother right when I was born. We desperately needed that money, and the more I got older, the more we needed it even more. I was then 15, and things were getting worse and worse, and we would pretty much be forced to live homeless if I continued like this. So, I absolutely needed to find my father. The year was 1998, I knew I couldn't find him alone, and this was before any kind of social media or ease of technology, so... I went to the one man who could help me, my grandpa. I told him that I was sorry to put him in such a tough situation as I knew that he probably still loved his son. But he was always very fair and I knew that he would help me. I sat down with him and asked him to help us. He told me that he's sorry he couldn't do more with money but that his financial situation wasn't great to begin with and he did all that he could. I told him that I knew that but he was the only one I could go to. I asked him how the whole thing started since my mom always refused to give me any details about my dad and what happened between them. Grandpa started by telling me how my mom and dad met in the first place. Apparently, dad was a few years older than mother, but my mom was still in college and they used to go to the same art exhibit every other week. My mom was young and beautiful, but my dad was pretty much a player. Grandpa told me that he used to get out with a lot of women and never settled down until he laid his eyes on my mother in that exhibit. They talked for a while about art and apparently they fell in love. But Grandpa thinks otherwise. When my dad told him about her, he only ever mentioned how beautiful she was and how fun she was and he never talked about anything else. Like her responsibility or her ability to even be a good wife. Because we do come from a smaller town. Early marriages were very common. Grandpa didn't approve of the marriage, not because of my mother, but because he knew my dad was reckless and just wanted her because she was young and beautiful. And that's all he cared about. Then my dad married my mom behind my grandpa's back forced her to leave college, and they traveled for a bit across the country. As my dad didn't really have one stable job, Grandpa tells me that ever since that moment, he had a big rift between him and Dad. And when my Grandpa tried to talk some sense into him, my dad told him that he was a foolish old man, that he didn't even care what he thought. 
Anyways, they were married for a couple years, and my grandpa didn't know anything until they moved back to the town because mother had fell pregnant. Grandpa tells me this was the only time where he felt somewhere close to his son. But that night before my birth, Dad told him how scared he was and how he didn't want a kid and that he was very rude about it. Grandpa tried to talk to him about responsibility and apparently it was such a big fight between them that my grandpa kicked him out and threatened to disown him if he didn't raise me. Well, the next day I was born without my father in the hospital. He left without a trace in the wind. After Grandpa told me about the story, he told me that he would help me find him, but that he didn't want me to come with him. I asked him why, but he did not give me a reason, and just told me that this was the only way it should be done. We went back to my house, and he told my mom and promised her that he would find him and make him pay all the child support owed. My mother had a moment of connection with Grandpa, thanked him telling him that he was a better man than my father ever was. I didn't know what my grandpa was doing until he found my father three months later, and my mom told me the whole story. Apparently, he started by traveling to another city, where my dad had an apartment and searched everywhere for him. He didn't find him, but found some traces, like his friends or co-workers, who told him that he moved around a lot and they had no idea where he actually lived. Grandpa went to the one person who may know exactly where Dad went. Dad's mom, my grandmother, who was Grandpa's second wife, and apparently she was a horrible person to the point where Grandpa took my dad away from her when he was still a child, and left because she was a drug addict who put my dad in danger of the child. Grandpa went to visit her in an old people's home, and, well... It was also a rehab place where she stayed for the last few years recovering from her drug addiction and just staying there because she was old and had no body. Mom tells me that she didn't even remember him from how bad her memory was, but she could remember names and basic stuff like that, so he kept asking her about her son. And while she gave very, very vague, confused answers at first, she finally remembered both of them and broke down crying telling him that she was sorry and that she didn't even know what she was doing. Grandpa really sympathized with her, even if he hadn't seen her in like <laughs> 40 years. She begged him to stay with her, but he just wanted to know where dad was. She struggled to remember at first, but told him somebody came to visit her and left a phone number. Dad took the number and the area code and was a completely different city from there. So... He had to go on another little road trip. Before going over to dad's new state, however, my grandpa recruited one of his dearest friends to help him. Apparently, grandpa's friend was a retired CIA officer. So he pretty much knew everything there is to know about finding someone. And he promised my grandpa to help him. They both traveled to that city, and even though they called a number a million times, the number never picked up. They were now on a new quest to find out where my father has gone. So, they spent days looking through phone books and stations, asking around, showing pictures, going through heck to find him until they came across another lead. They found someone who apparently knew him, and he told them exactly where he was living. So Grandpa and his friend went over there to investigate, and Mom tells me that they did find him. But the encounter was absolutely horrid. My dad looked very, very rough, and he screamed at his father, telling him that he never wanted to see him ever again, and asking him why did he come to find him in the first place. When my Grandpa tried to talk to him, my dad wanted to kick both of them out, but they refused, so... He called the police. Grandpa and his friend felt that it was pointless. They didn't really know what to do, so they left to go talk to him the next day. They stayed in their car all night on the stakeout waiting for him to leave anywhere, but he never showed. 
They went back into the building to ask about him, but one person there told them that he left in the middle of the night and he had his bags with him. They were now forced to find him in another place. They asked everybody in the building if he ever mentioned anything about leaving and they told him that he was packing to go to Dallas, Texas for a couple days. So they head over there to try to find him before he runs away again. On their road trip to Texas, one of Grandpa's friend's contacts called him and told him that my father had a long list of felonies and was wanted, missing court dates, and they figured that he was running away and moving so often. Pretty much everyone was on his tail, and he was going to prison either way when he gets caught, but they had to find him first. In Texas, it was the exact same as before. They kept asking around until miraculously found him in the same motel that they were staying at. The place wasn't his property this time, so he couldn't threaten them with the police and just forced themselves into his room to talk to him. Grandpa kept asking him why he was running and why he left in the first place, but Dad got aggressive, tried to fight them. My grandpa's dad held him down, beat him up, and broke two of his ribs. My dad was no match for him, and my grandpa was too disappointed and angry about his son to stop it. Grandpa literally threatened my dad that if he did not go back to town, kiss my mother's feet, and start paying that dang child support, he would literally have his friend cut off my dad's fingers. Dad's friend was already on the phone and made arrangements for my father to drive back to our town and my grandpa told him that he would make an example out of him in front of everybody, since everybody in town loved and respected him. Three months passed since I talked to my grandpa, and I pretty much lost hope in finding my dad. We were barely getting by, and I just stopped caring. Way later, when we did get the child support money, and my grandpa came back and passed away, my mom sat me down and told me the rest of the story. She told me that my grandpa, his friend, and dad did get back to the town one day super late at night while I was asleep and nobody woke me up to tell me anything. My mom and the whole town went outside, and my grandpa made an example of my father in front of everybody he knew eh, about how he was a failure. The town laughed at my father, even his friends knew from school. My dad finally agreed to pay most of the child support money, and he did. The next day, however, my dad disappeared again, probably because of all the illegal activity he had done and the cases he was involved in. That might have been the last opportunity I had to see my father. But mother insisted that it was better for me to never see him. Mom continued this story, however. She told me that after getting the child support money, we managed to pay all of our debt and things did become much better. Before my grandpa passed away, we got much closer to him and things were really starting to look up. My mom told me that the night my dad disappeared again, my grandpa sat her down and told her the reason my dad left in the first place, as she never knew and just thought that he stopped caring. He told her that because his mom never raised him, grandpa struggled with his son, and his son grew up to have this complex towards women, where he only saw them as temporary pleasures, and that he had this actual issue towards feeling affection for anybody and commitment because he didn't have his mother. My mom told me that for a single moment, she felt bad for my dad, but that it did not excuse what he's done. My grandpa did not pass away in the town, however, because he left right after dad left again, and I don't know anything until my mom told me. She told me that he left the town to go back to his ex-wife, and that the time he spent with her when he was looking for my dad, he struck feelings that he hadn't felt in forever, and he went back to her old peoples to come to try to reconnect and take care of her. As she was now clear of the drugs, Mom told me that Grandpa took her out of the home and that they went back together, since they never really officially divorced anyways, and lived together for a couple years before he passed. Mom was telling me this whole story on the day Grandpa's will was supposed to be distributed. 
We attended the reading of his will, and it was the biggest surprise I've ever heard. Grandpa left literally everything he had to my mother, including his house and all his belongings. The lawyer told us that he also left us this rare collection of antiques that he had. He had no idea how valuable they were. The lawyer tells us the antiques who Grandpa thought was junk were appraised at over $500,000. We couldn't believe how things turned in an instant like that. Grandpa really was there for us at the end, even if he didn't know it. The most notable thing, however, was that he didn't leave a single dime for his son. I don't know if my dad would even know of his father or anything about the inheritance, but apparently he did and he called my mom to talk to her about it. Mom told me that dad called her to ask how she got grandpa to leave everything to her. He told her that she was selfish and a horrible person for taking all of dad's money and assets and leaving nothing for him, and that he needed the money to pay off debts and the illegal stuff he was involved in. My mother told him that she had not seen him in 16 years and snapped on the phone. She told him that he was a spineless coward who didn't care about anything or anybody other than himself and dragged him for leaving us all those years ago. She told him that she was glad he was never part of my life because she didn't want me to end up just like him. Things got a little heated and she eventually threatened to call the police on him because he was already on the run away from the authorities. After their call, I literally never heard anything else about my dad in my entire life. My mom and I lived our life comfortably together for years and we had a great time. Even though it was just me and her without my gramps, we made it work and even went to visit grandma and give our condolences for gramps. She was doing much better and looked to be in a great place in her life. She told us crazy stories about her old life and the whole drug problem. But that year she spent with Grandpa was worth everything she suffered for. In the end, I was glad I didn't know or see my father because I didn't know how I would have handled seeing him or if he would have even been a bad influence. I don't even know what happened to him with the whole lawsuits against him and whatnot, but he seemed to still be on the run. I don't even know where to start with this story. Let's just go ahead and say, if it was not for the grandfather of this story, I don't know what would have happened. It was clear that OP's father was not a good guy. He did not care about his kid, his ex-wife or wife, did not care at all. If it wasn't for the grandpa coming in to basically save the day and leaving that huge inheritance for OP, like I said, I don't know what would have happened. And can you believe the nerve of OP's father to go and ask for some of the inheritance after not even being in either one of their lives for over a decade? Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts about that story and what you would have done. We still have one more story to look at, and man, it's a wild one. The title is The Trophy Husband, and basically it's about a story of a younger guy who marries an old, rich, successful woman, only to be found out that, oh man, he's made the biggest mistake of his life. I-36 male was just a simple barista whose life changed forever. I was always pretty down on my luck and not really the best when it comes to anything. I didn't go to college and didn't really have dreams of an amazing career. I barely got through school. My parents told me that I had to leave home, and I was pretty much on my own from then on. I didn't know what to do or what I actually wanted to do, so I did pretty much nothing. I moved out of my parents' place when I was 18 years of age and have been living in a rental apartment ever since. I had a roommate for a few years, but in the last two years, I've been living on my own which is actually my greatest achievement thus far. I work as a barista in a local coffee shop, and that's pretty much the best I could ever do after flipping burgers and cleaning dishes for a few years. I didn't hate my job, as I found making coffee strangely relaxing, and I liked the conversation with the people. 
Most people come in the morning, and I always find interesting examples of different careers and everyone sitting down to work or make business calls or even heck, send an email. I wanted to be one of those people oh so badly, but I knew there was no way to do that. About a year ago, a very sharply dressed woman started coming to the coffee shop every morning, sharp. She looked a bit older than me, perhaps early 40s, but she seemed like a pretty important person. She was always on business calls or meetings and seemed to be a manager or director of some sort. She always seemed tired or just too bothered, but she was always very nice and always smiled and we always held a little good conversation. The more she came, the more we talked, while I made her coffee and the more we just connected. We vibed. Over time, she became my favorite customer, and we always talked a lot. She starts telling me about how she was the CEO of a company, and that she always had issues with her work. She told me that she thinks nobody in the company likes her, and that she always has trust issues with the managers and employees. She seemed to be actually pretty lonely, and just wanted to have a conversation with somebody, a stranger. I always tried my best to be nice to her, and she seemed to really appreciate it. Over time, she starts trusting me more and more, and I even found out her using me as sort of a therapy session to tell me about cathartic experiences and to complain about her life or whatnot. She thought that telling me what goes on will not make a difference since I'm so away from all the business, but that it would make things easier on her to vent. I didn't think much of it, but she later started asking me if I went to college or if I was good at anything business related. I told her not really, but that I had a sharp mind and that I could solve problems, oh yeah, but that I was just still a simple barista. She seemed to want to offer me a job at the company, which I, uh, really appreciated, but I didn't know if I was anywhere near qualified for something like that. She always kept asking me questions about what or what not I could do, and three months later, I found myself learning so much about management from her that I was literally taking down side notes during my shift. She starts teaching me privately about all the stuff, and out of kindness or trust, got me a good managerial position at her company. Shifting from the coffee shop to a big boy company was a very big one. And I didn't know exactly how to adapt, but over time I did. She was with me every step of the way, and every time I asked her why she gave me the job, she just told me that she felt I was trustworthy and a good person, deep down. And that was what she was looking for. Not academics or skills. <laughs> they can be taught. I bought into it, and she starts taking me to the conferences and training, all the important get-togethers. I was still living alone in my apartment, but I had to splurge a little bit on suits and shoes. As expected, eventually, we got close enough that we got married. Yeah. My friends used to joke that I married a woman older and richer and more powerful, but I saw no wrong in it. I thought it was just fate. But a lot of men had that mentality that I'm now inferior to her and that she could control all aspects of my life. And I didn't see it that way, but I would soon be proven wrong. I moved in with her and to her massive house. Of course, as we wouldn't live in my tiny apartment. Whatever stuff I had left in my apartment and found that the house was fully furnished and I had a lot of stuff just waiting for me there anyways. I didn't mind it, but it did seem like a bit too much. I moved in and we lived together and everything was peachy at first. We both showed up to work every day together. I was in charge of my department, so I had total freedom there. Wow, she was in the top offices. Everyone in the company seemed to be talking, but whenever I tried to be friendly with the other employees, they always seemed to be shy. I soon realized that... I could not have this kind of friendly relationship with them, and that we had to keep it very professional. I had to be their distant boss, even though I really didn't want to. I didn't feel the power and class difference between us at all, 
except for times when she interfered into my department to take decisions on my behalf. For example, one time I've given an excuse for a group to leave, but when she found out, she overruled my decision while I was standing next to her. And when I tried to speak, she gave me this stern look as if I was her employee. I didn't like that at all. And it made me look small in front of my team, and when I confronted her about it, she joked that it was a force of habit. Well, this wasn't the only time. As she continuously kept opposing me on several points, and the employees eventually went to her directly, as a way to stick up to me like a kid getting permission from father after mom said no. It drove me crazy sometimes, and every time I brought it up to her, she just brushed it off and joked about it which made it me even angrier. I'd started realizing what my friends used to joke about who were wearing the pants in the relationship, but I didn't want to obsess over it just yet. There were some points, though, that I didn't like, and any time I tried to discuss it with her, she would just wave it off as if it was trivial. And yeah, guys, she never cooked. So, anytime I asked her to cook something or that I wanted to try her cooking, she would just look at me in this ridiculing way and passive-aggressive. One time, I commented that she was dressed inappropriately, and she told me that it was none of my business. She made a whole scene out of it, and when I told her that I was still her husband, she told me to remember that we were living in her house and that I was working in her company, it was a big fight, and my dignity almost had me leave the house and the company right then and there. But she later apologized, and we went on a vacation just to forget all the tension. Even on vacation, though, she starts taking all the decisions about where to go, what to do, what to eat. <laughs> I started joking that giving my opinion would be inappropriate. But she told me that I was just being ridiculous the whole trip. I didn't get one say about a detail, which kind of drove me nuts. I was forced to do activities and restaurants I didn't even like, just because she thought that it was the best course of action. When we got back from said vacation, I confronted her about this, and she told me this was her bad. She told me that because she's always just used to taking all the decisions in life and being put in the leadership role, it starts to rub off on her, and that she never actually means it. I understood, but I wasn't ready for what came next. All of a sudden, my wife starts becoming extremely controlling. I had a good friend of mine who used to be my roomie. Anytime I told her that I was going out with him, she would come up with some excuse that I couldn't leave and had to help her with something. So I kept canceling on my friend, and he got so upset but my wife seemed to be doing this intentionally when I confront her about this and asked her why she keeps blocking me from going out with my buddy. She told me that she did not trust him and that he was out for our money. I told her that's absolutely ridiculous, but she told me that I never even went out with him again. We would get a divorce. It was beyond extreme, and I had no idea why she would think he was so bad, so it took me a while to see him again. Another time, I was going out at 8 p.m., and she went on this rant about how I'm going out too late, that she needs me around, and that I never help her with anything. She gaslighted me into thinking that I was wrong for going out after 6 p.m., and made me apologize and feel guilty. She tells me that I should not go out at that time again. She had that way of being pushy while being delicate but very strangely authoritarian at the same time. Anytime I remembered that I was the one living in her house, I felt a bit awkward and didn't want to say anything. Over time, this got way worse. She starts becoming more and more demanding and whenever we went out with the elite of her social group, she would treat me less like a husband and more like a valet or servant. She always laughed off her behavior with me on how she belittled me in front of everyone. A simple example of this would be us sitting down with a bunch of her executives or rich people, and because of me being quiet, 
She would tell me to go park the car or do something useful instead of sitting quietly like this. People would laugh at it, at the way she treated me. And it makes me so angry that I decided I simply didn't want this life anymore. Her dominating obsession became worse, even in bed. At one point, she told me that I did not need to go to the office anymore and that they've hired somebody new. She didn't even tell me that she was taking my job away, but she told me that now I had time to stay home and take care of things until she came back. I was relegated to a housekeeper at that point. I wanted out. One night, I told her that I want a divorce and she laughed. She reminded me that I've signed a bunch of contracts and prenups with her and that even if I fancied a divorce, she would legally bury me. She told me that I needed to remember who I was and stay in my place. She degraded me for being a barista that she took from the streets and made something out of. She absolutely humiliated me in front of her assistant who was on a Zoom meeting with her and told me that it was her fault she took pity on somebody like me. The next day, she went to work and I literally snuck out of the house. Guys, I felt imprisoned in it, so I went back to my old apartment and called my friend over to help me think about what I should do. I told them that she's been absolutely losing her mind and that she was treating me more like a house pet. My friend, the one she really didn't like, came clean and told me the reason she didn't like him is that he used to work for her and she fired him. He told me that he didn't want to tell me the whole time so as not to make things awkward, but he told me that she has a ton of dirty business and that 99% of her employees don't like her. I thought about digging up some of her dirty laundry. So, I went straight to the source. The employees. I secretly emailed and sat down with so many of my company staff and they told me the most ridiculous stories. They told me how she abused them, cut their paychecks for no reason, gave them completely unfair work conditions and constantly pushed them over the smallest little thing. The employees gave me a long list of completely unethical things that she's done to employees, like keeping them in the office over time and preventing them from going to a parent's funeral, neglecting medical insurance, covering up a ton of workplace accidents that led to a major damage, and even paying off officials. So no lawsuits went through. And so much worse. One employee told me that one of the accountants got so stressed from covering up the dirty money to the point that he actually just hurt himself. Apparently, the company had a long list of covering up accidents and reports and paying bribes. In my investigation with a bunch of employees, one of the supervisors contacted me and told me that he needs to talk to me privately. It's a very important matter. He tells me some stuff I wouldn't believe. He told me that he's been married to my wife once and that she absolutely destroyed his life. He told me how she became so obsessive and controlling to the point where she threatened to have him imprisoned if he didn't do exactly what she told him to do and she only kept him around the company out of spite because he hated the job and she had him in a tight contract grip. Once I finished with the employees, next on my list was the house staff and maids. I stayed at her house in the morning for a couple of days to gather up evidence. I talked to the maids and the chef, and they told me some more heinous acts. The maids told me that she treats them horribly, and that she once threatened one of them, that she would have her deported. She was Mexican. Apparently, there used to be one maid who made her angry once and kept arguing with her loudly in front of her father, my father-in-law, and then they never heard from that maid again. Nobody knows what happened to her. They also told me stories about their family members dying and her refusing to let them go see them or going to the hospital or funeral or, or anything. She seemed to have this legal hold on everyone and the contracts she have people sign are riddled with loopholes. I can't even imagine what she could do to me with the work contract and prenups I didn't even read. I knew the one person who could stop her. Her father. 
The thing about her dad is that he lived abroad, but she's absolutely terrified of him. He was the one who founded the company and entrusted her with it, but he didn't really trust her. Pretty much everything she has is his, including the house, and he's extremely strict kind who's even more controlling than she is. He never lets go of a mistake, and she complained about him an absolute million times, so he was my one guy left. I got in contact with the guy and told him that his daughter had been messing up the company and at home and that there are major crises at hand. It took him a few days to get back to me, but when he emailed me back, I told him some more details about what I knew and he literally didn't even reply after that. It took a couple days. I found him at our doorstep. As soon as my wife saw him, she shivered in her boots. He got in. Didn't say hi, stood in front of both of us, telling me to start telling him what I know. She was confused, didn't know what was going on, but I start going off on everything she's done to me, to the company, to the house staff. As I was going, I could see her soul escaping her body. I witnessed it out of fear, and he just stared at her silently, intimidatingly. Once I finished presenting my evidence, there was a moment of silence before he thanked me apologized for the house staff and went to town. He yelled so loudly and violently at her that she broke down in tears. He said the most hurtful things about her being a disappointment and that he always wanted a boy. He told her he only left her all this so that she would shut up and he could stay away from her. He basically told her how much he despised her and how she only brought him headaches and troubles. In the end, he cut her off from everything. He told her that she's no longer the CEO of the company and that he was cutting her off from the trust fund and most of the family money. I watched her fall to her knees on the floor, begging both him and me, but we would not be convinced. I told her how she gaslit me, made me feel lonely and afraid of legal consequences from my own lover and that I didn't want her to even do any of this. I told her I was happy being a barista, and I wish I've never made her that dang cup of coffee. What blows me away about this entire story is the fact that the trophy wife, or OP's wife, she did not even own the stuff. She was not the owner of the business. She didn't even own the house that they lived in. But yet, she had so much entitlement in her, you would think that she was the ruler of the universe. And she learned swiftly after her father got ear how she's been misbehaving, how everything can come crumbling down. So now we end in the predicament of the end of the story, and we know exactly how it just played out. Guys, I have one question for you. If you were OP of the story and you were in his position, how would you go about getting away from this woman? Would you contact her father like OP did or would you do something more drastic? Let me know your thoughts. Drop them down below. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I read stories every single day. Some of the most dramatic stories I can find on the World Wide Web. If you're into that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I hope you have an amazing day, and I will catch you guys in the next one.